Perhaps the coolest part about robotics is that our software can run in a machine that can explore and manipulate the world around it. But hardware also comes with a new set of challenges. Sometimes the physical robot isn't ready or isn't easily accessible. There are also times when testing new code on a real robot can be dangerous. In all of these situations, it's nice to have the ability to run our code against a virtual robot in a simulator. There are many simulators that support ROS robots. A common one, and the one we'll be using, is Gazebo. It provides a physics-based virtual world and a variety of simulated sensors, all of which can be extended through a plug-in system. In most projects, you'll have a launch file that starts Gazebo for you and loads up the relevant robot model and plugins. But we can open Gazebo with an empty world by running the command Gazebo. And this is the window we get when Gazebo is ready. Let's take a look at the overall layout of this interface. In the center, we have a large 3D viewport. This shows us our simulated world. Our robot and all the other objects in the world will be rendered in this viewport. On the left, we have a tree of all of the objects in our simulation world. And the lower half of that panel will show us all the properties of an individual object when we have one selected. Along the top of the viewport are a variety of buttons for manipulating the objects in our simulated world, adding objects and lights to our world, and changing the way that we interact with the viewport. In the top right are buttons for saving a screenshot of our simulated viewport, plotting data coming from the world, and even recording a video of what we're seeing in the simulation. Finally, along the bottom are a variety of tools for monitoring and controlling the flow of time in our simulated world. So that's the Gazebo interface. It's a popular simulation tool used by several of the RoboJackets teams, and you'll get plenty of hands-on experience with it. Simulation tools often run slower or faster than real time. Unfortunately, it's usually slower. The ratio between simulation time and real-world time is known as the real-time factor, or RTF. You can see the RTF of your Gazebo simulation at the bottom with the other time controls. It's important that all of our ROS nodes are able to check the simulation's clock. For example, consider a node that is tracking a robot's speed by measuring its position over time. It may get two position measurements five seconds apart according to system time, even though the simulation has only advanced one second. If the node uses system time to calculate the speed, it will get a very wrong answer. To solve this, ROS has a convention for handling simulation time. There is a reserved topic name, clock, that is used by simulation tools to publish the current simulation time. Additionally, every node has a parameter called useSimTime. When this parameter is set to true, the ROS interfaces for querying time will subscribe to and track the simulation time coming over the clock topic instead of using system time. This way, the code we write doesn't need to care if we're using real time or simulation time. A common interface is provided that automatically switches between both. There are, of course, a lot of other details to creating useful simulation tools, but we've covered enough in this video to start using some of the tools ROS gives us out of the box.